I'm Levi Watkins, a uh, retired associate dean and also a retired professor of cardiac surgery here at Johns Hopkins. I'm sitting in uh, the Halstead Library. I've been here many times. But this is a particular time, a wonderful time. I'm sitting in front of a great man and a great friend, Vivian Thomas. Vivian is from Nashville, and he worked at Vanderbilt University uh, in the Department of Surgery uh, under uh, Professor Blaylock at the time. He was a laboratory assistant uh, to Dr. Blaylock and helped Dr. Blaylock in his research activities. Dr. Blaylock uh, was a professor of surgery and on the faculty at Vanderbilt and at the time was doing lots of research and was a great uh, surgeon. So a surgeon for Dr. Blaylock, a laboratory assistant for Vivian. You know, they had a, the complexity of the relationship was probably the most uh, special part of it. First of all, Dr. Blaylock needed someone that he could trust. Vivian was uh, exceptional in his techniques and also in his medical knowledge, having no education of, of sorts. Dr. Blaylock was imp impressed with all of that. Now, Vivian liked Dr. Blaylock also. Uh, but those were tough times, strict racial segregation. And uh, Vivian knew it, Dr. Blaylock knew it, uh, but they still became close. But I must say, they were closer on a professional level than they were on a humanitarian level. N nevertheless, when Blaylock came here, he brought uh, Vivian with him. And uh, the rest is history, we may talk about that. In the 40s, uh, there was strict racial everything. That means life, church, schools, everything. And uh, that followed uh, Vivian, I mean, that, and he found the same thing here in Baltimore. And that was tough on him, uh, even this hospital. But you know, I think their working together s started to show that uh, black men and women were capable uh, and if given the opportunity, could excel. And uh, that's, I, they didn't start with racial intentions. I think they ended up with racial uh, um, stimulation uh, because of how they worked together and how they both became famous. Um, I came from Montgomery and from the same type of background that Vivian was. In fact, the school they were uh, at Vanderbilt, I integrated that school as the only black uh, person there. Vivian knew that when I came up here. As a matter of fact, when I came here, I wondered, I saw his picture, I wondered, I knew Hopkins hadn't trained any black surgeons, so I wondered, who was this man? Vivian. I looked at the picture, and then I saw him in the cafeteria one day and asked, who are you? And he invited me up to the 12th floor of, uh, of uh, Blaylock, and that's where he was doing his, his research. And that's when I found out who he was and how great he was. And we eventually became great friends, and bringing it up to date, one of the things I tried to do here was to uh, diversify this place so that nobody would have to go through what Vivian and I went through. Vivian was very happy. Blaylock had passed. It gave him another opportunity to touch Johns Hopkins. So he started helping uh, me uh, with some of the recruitment. And right now, we stand pretty decent in the numbers of professors, deans, students, faculty, research people, the numbers of them that, of people of color. Uh, so I, I attribute a lot of that to Vivian, uh, and I also attribute a lot of it to Blaylock's Vivian's relationship. But uh, Vivian, in his responsibilities here in the animal lab, which we still have, uh, had the responsibility of teaching surgery to our students. Uh, uh, I know that might sound unusual, but yes, uh, students still have to go through surgery and learn. But he, on the 12th floor uh, uh, of uh, Blaylock, was the lab. Vivian taught them. He also taught interns and residents uh, 
you know, before they got to the operating room, could fine tune their techniques and everything, and also junior surgeons. And he did this for a long time. He did this for a long time, a couple of decades. So right now, part of the reason that we have this uh, portrait was these, some of these students got together and just wanted to recognize uh, Vivian's uh, work, uh, which was wonderful, because I wonder, well, how did a black man get in on, on the, on the here, he, here he is, couldn't eat in the, in the main cafeteria, but, but had a picture. So uh, that was very important. Let me tell you, when um, the Blue Baby operation is perhaps the most prominent uh, reason uh, for both of their fame. Now, a blue baby is a baby that is blue. Uh, and, and the baby is blue because the baby's oxygen. Blood is not oxygenated. The reason our blood is red is because it has oxygen. But when the oxygen is used up, it's blue. The lips are blue, and you can't do very much, and you can't live long. But uh, the blue baby operation was an operation uh, designed by Blaylock and executed by Vivian. What it does, it takes an artery from the heart, the subclavian artery, and, mix and uh, connects that artery to the artery to the lungs. After all, the oxygen comes from the lungs. And in babies like the blue babies, they don't have the proper supply or the anatomy for it. So Vivian and, and, uh, and uh, uh, Blaylock and Tausick, Helen Tausick, the cardiologist, came up with the technology for it. Vivian fine-tuned the technique. He had done so many in animals. That was the reason that uh, uh, Blaylock wanted him around for the first baby, the first human uh, operation. So that's what it is. It's an attempt to bring red blood to a blue baby uh, and, and, and prolong their life. It, it was quite something. It had never been done before. It, it was the beginning of heart surgery in the world. It made Hopkins world famous, although we had a few other things with which to be famous about, but that's what the Blue Baby Operation uh, was. What was spectacular about it was doing it in a little baby, a child. Uh, and then Vivian came up with these instruments that were so tiny, uh, but those instruments became famous also. So the Blue Baby Operation just set the tone for both the life of Vivian Thomas and also uh, Dr. Blaylock and also Johns Hopkins. Now he did die in 85, but he saw, he saw uh, when I became chief resident, he saw all of that with pride. He was so, almost like my dad, uh, but he didn't want me to raise too much hell uh, in the effort for diversifying um, and in the effort for making Hopkins truly global, truly uh, world known, not just for inventions like these guys did, but for the way they treat people and patients. After all, that's the way Mr. Johns Hopkins had ordered it. But he did have an honorary doctorate in science. We would have given it to him in medicine, but you can't give honorary doctorates in medicine. So he got the honorary PhD in science. That was prob probably one of the greatest moments for him because he didn't he was not used to attention and did not seek attention. He let his, as my mother said, let his work speak for him.